Many a times, trees are cut down and not replanted. Deforestation disrupts ecosystems and leads to many problems, among them climate change and global warming. Richard Kakunga, an ambassador of trees, is seeking to fight deforestation by attaining a green tree cover by doing what he does best. I was born and raised actually in a military barracks. So for the person that I am today, it began since I was a child, having attended a military nursery school, a primary school and a secondary school, all under the military. And uh, this, this has molded me to having ended up being very much more um, caring about the environment and that is why I currently serve as the CEO of Me Forest Initiative. By growing up and interacting with like-minded youth who were also seeing the effects of climate change and the rapid desertification that was happening in Kenya, uh, we ended up coming together and asking ourselves what can we do as youth and so that is how our organization Me Forest Initiative was born. Uh, to address um, the climate change that was happening rapidly in Kenya, things that we hadn't seen before. Recently we have seen even sandstorms uh, happening here in Nairobi or even in Mombasa and Kenya itself, something we have never seen before, the locust invasion which has also been recent. So it is such um, climate crisis that drove us to start our initiative, Me Forest Initiative, to ensure that the future generations and even our kids and grandkids at least will not come and find a Kenya which we did not do our part to ensure it will be sustainable for them. What encompasses a good tree species to plant? Many would wonder. We normally start by looking at the areas which tend to be affected more or which as per our analysis and expert consultation will be in an area whereby there might be, there's a feasible climate crisis that might happen to them. Is it a landslide? For example, those living near quarries. Uh, is it flooding? You know, uh, is it waterborne diseases when we have a lot of flooding now, like Kibra? Our technical wing also falls within that. So Me Forest has ended up developing a green tech uh, technology, which is an application called Green Pup. Green Pup is a tree species to site matching tool, meaning that it recommends the right tree species to plant at any point of Kenya as per the climatic conditions and soil composition of that area. So that the trees which are planted, they end up surviving much more than just planting the tree, any other tree that you might take it here and you take it to Kisumu or Mombasa, but it's not suited for that climatic condition. Richard explains rating of trees at hand in terms of value addition to the community as well as the economy. I look at community, uh, the community as a chain, you know, and uh, which is we are deeply interlinked and connected, even without realizing it. For myself as a person, I cannot progress uh, socioeconomically if it were not for an impact which someone else has done, whether I know them or not. For me, Forest, we focus on a number of things. One, uh, we are based in Langata and uh, we have been working for the longest part in Kibra. And what we do is we try to teach people also how to start up tree nurseries. In this way, you are, you are empowering them uh, socioeconomically. So we teach them how to manage these nurseries. We teach them the right tree species to plant. And also we teach them how to best plant these trees and ensure survival. So once you've set up these youth groups, uh, women groups and uh, the different CBOs and also uh, working with persons who are able differently. And through other partnerships that we have with other organizations, uh, international organizations and so on. During international days which commemorate aspects of environment, we go back to these youth and uh, organizations that we have empowered to buy the tree seedlings from them. One of Richard's greatest innovations so far is the app that helps people to plant trees virtually with the help of ambassadors. Green Pub is a web and mobile based application. 
desert tree species to site matching tool, recommending the right tree species to plant. And Green Pup has three basic functionalities. It is a data collecting tool. In that, it collects the data for tree planting activities that have been happening across the country. This was not uh, properly documented for the longest part. And despite you recording the information, Green Pup also allows you to plant virtually by bringing the forest to the palm of your hands. You can virtually plant a tree and this order will be fulfilled by our green ambassadors who are spread across the 47 counties, you know, and they'll be taking care of that tree. The second functionality of Green Pub, it is a data uh, analysis tool, a data visualization and analysis tool. We are able to project all the data that of these tree planting activities and the last time we did a report to the ministry and the cabinet secretary uh, for the short range period of last year we had planted uh, Kenya as a country had planted 38 million uh, seedlings which 28 million was through aerial seeding. He knows well the value of working with others in his long and demanding journey. We have partnered with, uh, we have been lucky to receive a grant from one uh, organization called Skywatch. Skywatch works hand in hand with NASA and they do, um, they, they, they do process data, or satellite data for a lot of, you know, um, a lot of research. But now our focus is on agroforestry and agriculture as well. So we are able to monitor which areas the trees are not survival. Through the drones also, the drones are able to advise us why did the trees in this particular section, uh, why were they not able to survive? We can use uh, thermal vision because of that. Is it a building that is nearby and perhaps it's reflecting too much sunlight towards that particular area? And that is why those trees are not, being, uh, are not surviving in that particular area. So that is what generally Green Papa has been doing and our partners in that for the data, uh, for the tree site matching, we approached uh, the Kenya Forest Research Institute when our dream seemed too big to be true for most of the people and individuals. Uh, they took us in and at least uh, the data that they are providing us is rich data that as, uh, is there as a result of Kenyan scientists who have always been researching for the very many years. That's how we are able to know this climatic condition is very good for this particular tree. Uh, we received a grant from Microsoft. It's called AI for Earth. Uh, Microsoft AI for Earth uh, grant was being introduced in Africa for the first time. And it was only 10 startups which were to get this uh, particular grant. We are the only one in Kenya, we are very lucky and we are very honored of that. And we are all the only one as well in Africa in our category to get this grant uh, from Microsoft. Other partners we work closely with is the Ministry of uh, Environment and Forestry because they are taking up our application as the official monitoring tool for tree survival rates. Richard reveals to me his ultimate goal in his tireless efforts to beat climate change, that is, the 10% forest cover by 2022. What you're working towards is attaining and maintaining over 10% tree cover of the land area of Kenya, as stipulated in Article 69 b of the Kenyan Constitution. As we stand right now, the tree cover of Kenya is 7.22%. We're supposed to achieve 10%. The difference of trees, the deficit that you have is 2.2 billion trees. Those are very many trees. So that is why uh, under our category of green ambassadors, we also have vendors who are on the street. So when you are planting virtually, you'll be linked to even you can be able to buy from that particular vendor or you can be able to buy from an agency of the government uh, which has a tree nursery and so on. Young and ambitious and keeps on counting his achievements. Our application received acclamation uh, during the International Youth Forum that was held in Sochi, Russia, where I had the opportunity to go as a guest, uh, as a guest speaker. And uh, the whole focus was on how uh, our green ambassadors are enabling you know, uh, every other Kenyan to take up climate action. Efforts that are clearly visible to the world as he is Africa's finalist for UNEP Young Champions of the Earth Prize. And when it comes to the youth, he champions for their advocacy and inclusion on matters empowerment and development. 
for the longest part, uh, I have been serving also as the president of Young Diplomats of Kenya, whereby I am a youth advocate and I advocate for the inclusion of youth in policy making. And this is not only in matters of domestic relations, but also in international relations. Richard draws his greatest motivation from the late Nobel laureate Dr. Wangari Mathai and the hummingbird's tail. Dr. Wangari Mathai, the first African woman and, uh, to, and Kenyan lady to win a Nobel Prize in Environment. Yeah, she really, really motivated me. Every time I walk uh, through Karura, every time I see the beautiful trees or people enjoying Uhuru Park, all that is because of her, how she fought. She as a single individual, as a kid, I was a bit traumatized during that time when I saw, you know, all these mobs, you know, going to attack her. I remember seeing a video of them pulling the hair uh, from her head and holding clubs. Even the TV had to be switched on because that was switched off because that really traumatized me. But that image has never left my head. There is uh, one very interesting story that the late uh, Nobel laureate, Professor Wangari Madai, normally gives about. There was a forest and a fire started uh, in the forest, a very, very big fire. All the animals ran, you know, they ran away from the forest, thinking they cannot do anything. They're just very, very small. Yeah, they're, 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 they're very small to have any impact on that. But interestingly, there was one hummingbird. And as you know, a hummingbird is one very beautiful, tiny uh, bird species. It kept on flying to the water hole, drinking, coming and, you know, spitting its drop on the fire. It kept on doing that, doing that, doing that, doing that. And all the other big animals like the elephant and so on, which metaphorically now I might put it as our leaders who we're expecting to guide us, who have the big trunks to even uh, suck up most of the water, they were wondering what is this hummingbird doing? So they asked the hummingbird, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Do you think you can do anything about this? But the response that the hummingbird gave was very simple, yet very beautiful. That I am doing the best that I can. To whichever capacity that I can. That is to my level best. So I think when myself as an individual and you as a Kenyan, You've done your best to take up something. Believe you me, there's someone who will notice and you will motivate someone. There have been a number of challenges along the way, but none of them have been reason for him to quit. The challenge that we've always had, not only in Kenya, but a everywhere in the world, is that people do not, uh, many people uh, do not have uh, the mindset of taking up climate action. They do not see the values that uh, planting a tree might give them immediately. But that is because a tree that is planted today only starts benefits at, uh, benefiting us uh, 10 years later. I, I do acknowledge, and people do acknowledge, something like racism uh, exists. But when you go outside the country, you with your PhD, and when someone else who maybe, maybe just has technical skills also travels outside the country, Someone who's racist will not care about titles or anything. They'll just see you as two very useless black people, you know, to be very real, because uh, I have faced racism myself uh, at some point as well. And during such instances is when you remember, where can I run back and cry and be received, you know, with comfort. It's home. And where is home? Kenya. So that is what always motivates me to keep on going. These are the ambassador's views about climate change and global warming. Climate change is as a result of human activity. It's as a result of human behavior. It's also as a result of ignorance by we as humans on our part and uh, unfortunately to say also for leaders for the longest part because environment was never taken seriously. Many dockets, uh, many dockets might be given a lot of attention but environment, you know, it might be underfunded and so on. So climate change 
has been happening because we've been having a lot of urbanization projects going on. So as I'm saying human activity, you'll find people going, we've recently seen in Gong Forest, there was many trees which are cleared so that estates can come up. Whatever you're doing, be conscious of nature. Ensure it is sustainable. We need trees and plants more than they need us. So it is our duty to do what is right. This is the Arts Champions parting short. We need animals and plants way more than they need us. Because it is nature which sustains us. Nature came before us. You know, nature has always been there. You know. Nature can exist without us, but we cannot exist without nature. Right now we are in the COVID pandemic. Nature is thriving, you know. But uh, we've had a lot of impact, uh, negative impact on nature. There's food insecurity. As we are right now in the pandemic, we are the ones who are suffering without enough food. You know? So we are the ones who are supposed to take up this initiative.